And so 1978, we decided to approach the Minister of Agriculture, the lady who had responsibility for food. We had a very nice conversation, and she said, you should go to see the Assistant Minister of Planning in the Ministry of Agriculture. The young brother, I think you yeah, our own generation too, the Peking too wanted to prove that he too was knowledgeable and that nobody would push him over. That. I mean, the conversation was not friendly at all. Very hostile conversation we both kept. We went back to see him. We met with him about three, four times, you know, talking about the food, sending letters here and there. But let me bring you up to date about something. Because I hear some people in this place keep talking about it. I think between March and April 1978, we wrote the Ministry of Justice and the President of Liberia to have a political meeting in this very hall. In this hall. This hall. And we asked the President, just in case the pavilion is broke, please let us use City Hall. We got no reply from the President. We got no reply from the Minister of Justice. And the day we ice to hold meeting in this hall, the true way party brought battalion into this city. They, they brought the army for the first time out of the barracks. They brought the army from Kianama, from Kiam Ramrod, from Todi. They brought them and they shut this hall down. This hall. This historical hall was denied to the people. Mr. Chairman. They just shut us out. But who said they can have meeting in our place? The Centennial Memorial Pavilion became their place. By the 1978. But what was troubling, you didn't reply us, but you brought army. I watched the young people in CDC. I watched the young people in the National Patriotic Party. Please give me one second, let me talk to you why I, why I make this uh, conversation with the commission. To fight power game, you got to know the rules. To play power game, you honor obligation to learn the rules and learn it well. Because the people you'll be meeting, they are crafted, very brilliant people. I just want you to know that. Because when I see CDC people every day, when I see MPP case every day, I always say, now nah, that look like power. Yeah, I would do my hell at it, you know. They look at us, that's how we used to be. Yeah. People told us we have no place in this place. That we have no right to be here. And the only reason they told us that, Mr. Chairman, because we're native people children. We're poor people children, oh man. But why they can't find something to do? And mind you, they might not ask you where you study in school and you might not call some different thing. But you can't teach. 
But why you don't go and teach? But how come you're not doing little agriculture? Do you want to define what is good for you? My pal, my great grandfather, my grandfather, my father. I show millions of fathers throughout the land and breadth of our country told their children what they can do, and they told them that sky is the limit. They told them. Anyone that I've seen in my life, I tell them every day, you are good. I love you. My own children, my relative children, did the pride and joy. If you were to get to see any of my kids this morning and you'd say something to them, say, be kind of to me. You're not telling me something new. Because I told them they have to be competitive. That I born in a place that was not friendly to me and to my friends. 1978. We had all of 1978, Mr. Chairman, up and down with True We Party. Up and down. Communication. We did something else, Mr. Chairman. There's nobody of significant in the town we didn't talk to. We had no problem walking in somebody's house or office to your question and what do you know? Because it was important to us. We're outsider, man. We knew we were outsider. We knew we were truly in a strange territory. We knew that. So we wanted to understand what it, what, what it was all about. 1978. 1978. Three times in 1978, we decided to hold public meeting, pal. Three times. They threw a party, turned her down, and they didn't only turn her down from the hall, they brought the army. Late 1978, the first political party meeting that was held in this town after, after from, from 1956 to 1978, the meeting we had was the first opposition meeting held in this place. And guess where it was held? Guess where? On the beach, Coconut Plantation. On the beach, 1978. 1978. You want to tell me all the public buildings in a town are taught? And we started asking them ourselves. But I thought this government said they want opposition. But for them, the true we party government did not draw a line between political party, true we party, and the government of Liberia. In fact, they were one and the same. We had a meeting, and President Talbot, the security told President Talbot, we had a meeting on the beach, and there were guns on the beach. 1978. We met with President Talbot. And he said, you know, I get a report. You all get guns. But you know, you all can't do nothing here. You know, wherever little gun you all get. 78. The two points I'd like to make. The people that work in our security services, You are dealing with that very question today. The police. 
we are organizing the police we are organizing the armed forces of Liberia what is the mission of the new army after 14 years of war what is the mission philosophically what is the army supposed to do the army of 19 of 2008 understand some foreign people are organizing this army what do they know about the sociology the anthropology the history of Liberia to constitute our army what do they know about us then I hear say the police days the police died who constituted the police what the police supposed to do what's their mission what's the purpose Nineteen seventy-eight. They brought the army on us because we want to have meeting in this room. The true army at us. We pull back. We're not ready. No, we're not ready. After the third, when we had a meeting. In Cochrane Plantation, by that time, we are organized pal in every neighborhood in this town. Every neighborhood in this town has what we call area committee. Mr. Chairman, we work 24 hours nonstop in this town. Oscar Queer. DJ Wonsele, we decided we we'll take another large county from the True We Party and we took Nima. We wanted to teach them a lesson very badly. We wanted to rub their noses in the sand so they would know that power belongs to all. We wanted them to know that politics or the whole power game was full time. It was not only about eating money, taking people money, arresting people falsely, lying up and down. There's a definition of governance that I want you to know, Mr. Chairman. It says, strong state. Strong state. Accountable to a citizen under the rule of law governance there are several definitions as you go through the literature you will find for this discussion I want you to focus on that piece for a while for me strong state accountable to a citizen under the rule of law so what is the law? What is the law, Counselor? What did they say about forming political parties? What did they say, what should be the behavior governing political parties? Prior to 1986 Constitution, what was the law? I'm not even worried about 1986. What was the law that governed the behavior of political parties prior to 1986 Constitution? What was the law? Because it's important. It's important for you to know because you may, you, you, you may, you know, can you say where they, 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 they violent, they outside the law but what is the law it's important for this commission because for me I'm hoping that when the commission job is done you will help us to understand what has happened to our country you will help us to understand the place of the Constitution you will help us to understand how we do business as a government 
you help us to understand what is the role of the political parties. How should they behave? <coughs> so 1978, we decided we'll, we'll get in the office. That man, he was involved in diamond business. May his soul rest in peace this morning. Timothy Frank. Mr. Frank said he worked with Nancy Brunel and other people in 1956. He said they killed them. And he said his way of mourning of grieving would be to give Paul his house. If you, if you, the place, I stopped there this morning, I stopped at Paul's office this morning. I stopped to the mass grave of the power people that were dumped there. I went there to say, I will tell your story. In 78, around October, November, all the ministries were preparing annual reports. And our people at the Ministry of Agriculture informed us that oh, the, the minister recommending rice increase. No, the Oma, the Oma increasing the rice. Oh. So when we heard that, but well, right around that time, please let me say bye. <laughs> All the area committees came together and they, I was asked to serve as the general coordinator of PAL Monrovia branch. So I took a seat on the leadership table of PAL. When we got a word that the old man had recommended price increase, I convened a meeting of all the area committees. <laughs> that meeting, we considered one item. Food. Food policy. That's all the meeting was about, to discuss food policy. December 1978. The, the Monrovia branch of the Progressive Alliance of Liberia convened. We invited the leaders of the Central Committee, Mr. Matthews, Mr. Queer, D.K. Wonsilie, Samuel Doki, D.K. Uh, Wonsilie, Dominate South from Bonn and all of our men around the country. And Nyepan from Sino, we brought all of them in. We wanted to have a conversation among ourselves. I recall at the end of that meeting, we decided that we hold a demonstration. I was instructed by the Central Committee to ensure that a demonstration take place. My many were clear. Let the demonstration happen. December 1980. I mean 1978. The 
then we went back. It was outreach. Talk to people in government. Talk to people in business. Talk to people in a true we party. Went back to Minister Florence Chenoweth. At the time, the current president of Liberia, Mr. Salif, was Deputy Minister of Finance. She was B person too. B person, the true we party. Yes. 1978. We read this conversation with school, we went to LU library, cutting down, just talking to people to understand the issue better. So we wrote Minister of Justice Oliver Bright to grant us permit to demonstrate to take our request to President Talbot and the True We Party. Because we, by that time, we have learned a thing or two about how this government, or the True We Party government, how it does business. And so we took our letter to Mr. Bright, provided a covering letter, and sent it to President Talbot. The letter we sent to President Talbot, we asked for a meeting. We asked for a meeting to meet with the President and the government. The president agreed to meet with us on March 25th, 1979. March 25th, 1979. Power constituted a 25-man delegation at that time, we call our delegation the People's Delegation. They were comprising of people from the civil society, from our party, and people who have interest in the issue. The President Thomas brought to that meeting Mrs. Helen Johnson Salive, his Deputy Minister of Finance. She attended that meeting. Oliver Bright, Florence Chenoway, Richard Henrys, Frank Talbot, the stars of the True Party were there. March 25th, 1979. At the end of that meeting, President Talbot told us, or told a meeting, that he understood the concern of the delegation. He said, I will get back to you. Let it be known that the recommendation from the Ministry of Agriculture is just a recommendation. We trusted the president. We had a handshake with a gentleman. Because I must say quickly, President Talbot had treated Powell with respect. And when he, whenever he tells us something, we honor it. From March 25th, to April 4th, we didn't get a word from Oliver Bright, we didn't get a word from Florence Chenoway, and we didn't get a word from the President of Liberia. Matthew and I sneaked into the President's office. We went to the mansion, we told the people that we were there, we wanted to see the President. The President agreed to see us. We went, he looked at Murphy, he looked at me, and he said, Do 
you understand that a people that producing rice or importing rice need to make some profit? And Matthew said, yeah, Mr. President, we do. And I asked him, I said, Mr. President, so how much profit is supposed to make? He said, Khan, your father is a farmer. You don't want to show a king the way he working? He said, yeah, Mr. President. But not the way you're doing it. Because nobody reach us, Mr. President. We get role. By that time, we have read the literature now. We were very solid, very confident on the literature on the books. I said, no, not the way you're doing it. No role. Nothing there. So, you know, my father, I don't expect my father's condition to change, Mr. President. And then during the meeting, Matthew said, Mr. President, who stand to benefit from a proposed price increase? He said, Mr. President, we have a listing of all the people that are importing rice to Liberia today. The number one importer is Daniel Talbot, your brother. He said, Mr. President, we have a listing of all the rice producers. The number one producer happy to be you and your friend JT Philip and all of you. So, so, yeah. President Talbot got up. He got up. You could see his face. And he walked out. He came across, he came around the table. He came around the table. And he said, he, he, was, he was shaking. And I said, Mr. President, we trust you. You've been fair to us. You've been firm. Please do something about the rice. And then he took it. With two hands, he gave me the center of Matthew and myself. He put a hand on my shoulder. He put a hand on Matthew's shoulder. And he said, I will do everything that in my power to get the issue resolved. We shook his hand for the second time. We thought we were making a gentleman agreement again. April 4th, 1979. Mr. Chairman, why am I going through all of this? Because there is the thinking in this town that power people were reckless. That these boys were just troublemakers. Please let me say, no, we're not. And if you if you decide to do a good work, and you take the profile of the guys in power, each and every one of them take each of them, run through their life. Over the last 30, 40 years, there is no spot on our skin about, force, about the use of force in this country. No spot. We, the PAL people,
people, including those that are lying in a graveyard on Center Street, those that were buried in Campo Village, the police threw them there, and the only crime they committed was because they were power members. They killed them. Those that dominate Bank, took on the beach in Greenville, the sprinkler said, oh, the only crime they committed was because they were power members. Those who were jailed in Camp 4 or in San Iquile or in Lamco area or beaten in Lamco area, the only crime they committed was because they were power people. We, no time, Mr. Chairman, try to force anything in this town. We follow the law. Now, if somebody in this room sitting and listening to the radio say that you commit a crime to abide by the Constitution, then I submit to you, Mr. Chairman, I commit crime. If somebody on this panel, if somebody in this room, if somebody sitting somewhere in the country say, power people commit a crime because they follow the law, then we submit. I respectfully say to you, Mr. Chairman, we did not. We follow the Constitution to the letter. We follow the Constitution to the letter. After April 4, after our meeting with the President, we drew some conclusions. We left that room believing that President Talbot's mind was made up and there would be price increase. We got to Gurdy Street, our past office, after all the analysis and all of that, we wrote President Talbot a letter. Asking President Talbot to accept a $20,000 contribution to do research on our food policy. We said to the President that he did not have sufficient evidence that the research, that the formulation of our food policy, that the logic was faulty. We concluded the President's logic for increasing the price of rice was faulty. And we wanted you to reconsider the idea that we asked him to employ people, to recruit people, to bring people to study the full policy of Liberia so that we can all make progress, including him. A few days, we got a letter of rejection from the president that they would not accept our contribution. At that time, Oliver Bright had issued the first order to shoot and kill if any child is found in the street. Oliver Bright, the Minister of Justice, my Attorney General, decided that he will shoot me for a bind by the law. Oliver Bright. Remember something? The losses you have today was never there, my people. Every radio, everything that resembled radio in this town was controlled by the True We Party. Everything that look or smell like newspaper in this town was controlled and managed by the True We Party. 
whether a Liberian age, Liberian star, the inaugural, the bent all times, you name ice anybody in this town. Everything that was newspaper in this town was controlled by the True Way Party. In fact, the only radio station in this town, they we find there were two. ELBC, owned by the government of Liberia, and ELWA, a Christian radio station. So, how come these boys who have no means, how come they beat them? The people have radio. They have television. The man who spoke for two days in this place yesterday, he was government announcer. Yeah. Government announcer. This guy who, who bowled this town yesterday. Government announcer. The government controlled the media then. Today, through radio, um, all sort of radio stations are now here. You should look back and smile and say, well, I guess we made a little progress then. With all the radio stations you get here and all the newspaper you get here, you can write anything. You, you, you can say, well, look, but we come a long way, right? So Oliver Bright issued orders. Then, seamlessly, the Minister of Education issued order that no child will go in the street for the demonstration. He has showed the president. And da, 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 da. Seamlessly. Easter. Easter. This holy day. This holiday was coming. People were trying to organize themselves for Easter. And here were pal people organizing to do this work. We reconvene again. The Central Committee of uh, the Progressive Alliance of Liberia we reconvene and we decided to step up our outreach and our, my assignment was to see two people Itomo Reeves George D. Brown we have been in contact with Bishop Brown from the time Matthew arrived here Bishop Brown, Reverend Reed a lot of people and, and Bishop would say, so come, what is it that you think you will do with True Way Party? Why don't you just find one little scholarship and just go away? Please forgive me for stopping my boss man just arrived. You know. Welcome, Mr. Pierre. We went out, Matthews, Queer, all these guys, to talk to people. As a principal organizer, I was getting nervous. Getting very nervous. Because when you listen to the radio, or you watch TV, you panic. The government was issuing shoot to kill orders. I think it was April 12th, Matthew Sawyer Fambule met. I think somewhere, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was in the cemetery to review everything that was happening. And, 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 and the fundamental question was asked, what is it that we'll do now? I can say we, we have it. After that conversation, the bottom line was 
the demonstration will take place. Oliver Bry was hurt. Was the police force at that time was, was ravaged. They had recruited a lot of the young people into the riot mood. They trained them to fight riot, to fight, uh, do like the demonstration basically, to acquire riot. And they were hot. They gave them cars, they gave them new uniforms, they get their plane, they think they were New York police acting hot. Oliver Bright said, anything that you see in the street that says, shoot it. That March, that April 12 meeting between Matthew Sawyer and Fambule. I didn't attend a meeting, but when they came from there, they said the meeting didn't go well. April 13, I remember having a meeting with Queer and Matthews. I asked both Mr. Queer, the Secretary General, who was my boss, and Mr. Matthews. I said to them, to train and prepare a revolutionary to bring somebody to your caliber. It's hard. It's hard. It takes time to train people for states for statesmanship. And so you guys should not come to Garden Street. I will take over the leadership at Garden Street and we march from Garden Street to the executive mansion and we, you can join us. We will, I will send the word to all the guys who may want to be there. I still recall in an emotional way, Queer Hawk me and he said, you sure that what you want to do? He said, you're your mother, only child, you know. I said, but that's the reason I want to do it. Matthew looked at me a long time. He reached out to me. He shook my hand. He reached his hand. I shook his hand. And the meeting was over. We had a deal. We're getting ready now for showtime. Committees of power. How you were arrest? At the time, Monrovia was about maybe 400,000, you know. And the police say they will shoot at 400,000 people. We were worrying at that time about a couple of things. Some people said, but we can go to court. If they deny us the permit, why don't we go to court? And Mr. Chairman, part of your work as this uh, um, true commission, please pay attention to the justice system. Please do everything. Ice America, I Britain, ice any nation of goodwill to help us fix our justice system. So that we can recruit independent people to the hall. People who have guts, people who have nerve and the intelligence to administer the law. You don't need flunky in the court. If we do not take time with that piece of our life, we have another round of 14 years. 
we must find a way to reconstitute the court. And some bum said, why you can't go to court? Jimmy Pierre was presiding over the court, the Supreme Court. Jimmy Pierre was one of those notorious attorney general of Liberia. He prosecuted opposition. And, and Paul must go before the PA court to eye for justice. You think we're crazy? We must go to the Supreme Court to ask the Supreme Court, please let her, let her demonstrate small, you know. Imagine. We control the force. Politics is about force, my friend. We had a force. My friend Gabriel Matthew used to say, we have the hair count. We could beat the truth we party any second after April 14. We we're good. We we're knowledgeable. We we're smart. We had a lot of energy. And we didn't make a secret. No, no secret about that. They knew we would beat them. And they decided that we'll be intimidated at all costs. They will shoot a couple of bodies, and if, it, if the gunshot hit Oscar Kuya, so be it. Matthew, forget that. They were, their mind were clear. They were, we have picked up, there was nothing in this town between 1978 and 1979 that we did not know. You have a meeting 9 o'clock by 9.50, we knew where you concluded. That how good we were. Politics is full time, guys. All of you guys who doing political party work, and you think, and the job we need, empowerment, and, 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 no, 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 no. I have a gentleman, he told us something, and I will let you know that. April 14 came. So, the night of April 13, that we have pulled her walk, the Ministry of Justice over and over, Judge Brown over and over, Tomo Reed over and over, name every person or significant in the town, in the church, were trying to get involved to, re to stop the crisis. Oliver Bright, he will not hear. We issue one thing, the Progressive Alliance of Liberia will now go to court to seek permit to demonstrate. We issue a policy statement. We issue in that statement that the Progressive Alliance of Liberia will demonstrate 3 p.m. will be on the grounds of the executive mansion at 3 p.m. to present a formal request to the president and the true party not to increase the price of rice. That's all we say. That night, may his soul rest in peace. We are guarding Mr. Queer out of the whole facility because that area was infiltrated by all the police, all the security people. If we are talking about Guider Street, the graveyard, Rana Street, what they used to call Cooper Farm, you know, the, um, you know where they have the, all the, 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 UN, the UN area, all the offices, the security people, because NBI were right there when you climb the hill, when you go in uh, Mercury Street, they were right there. The entire security network was brought to falls and they descended on Gurdy Street. Some of them claimed to be members of power. And those that we know will come to you and tap you on the back and say, Bingy, this is a rough business. Don't do this. Don't do this. Oh, yeah, we blew their covers too. We blew their covers. Twelve o'clock, our post show up at Pa's office. 
this gentleman, Mr. Quia, was not comfortable leaving me in harm's way. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for the guidance. Thank you for the help. I've approached him. He was looking for power leadership. I didn't know Mr. Queer have come back. I told the guy, I don't want to talk to Albert Port. He can stop talking about that. Talk about that mind made up. And Oscar showed up. And Albert Port showed up. Providence. Very good coincidence. And Albert Port said, Queer, the president need your assurance that Paul will cut the foolishness off. Queer said to Abapo, we will. If we get a president to move the police, we will. He said, I will take you to Mr. Talbot. By that time, every official snagging in this town, they have fled. They fled this town. All the people that were pretending to be government officials, they ran with their pants down. No spine. They fled this place. I will pull dry all night. This guy was running, going to Bento, going to the mansion to get to the president. And he said, so he said, look, Mr. Port, pal, the, the, the operation is good to go, okay? <laughs> We're good to go. It's not when you say we should cut a demonstration or at midnight. Ooh. Okay, we we'll cut it off. We send word to our people from 12 midnight to about six, seven o'clock that morning that when you hear a gunshot goes off, that's the only time you move from your place. Wherever you are, stay. Don't move. There's a man in this place, they call him Wilfred Clark. Was supposed to have been one of the security guru in this town. There was, a, there was a thing we used to do, we call it cell. And cell, you know, little, little, little something, something, you know, little something to, you know, get the word out. But Wilfred said, he saw that word in a communist manifesto. And when you talk about cell, it's about underground activities. And Paul was employing that tactic to go underground. And Wilfred Clark wanted to know. He wanted to know. At that time, Vernon Dempster was at the height of his career as a policeman. One of Liberia's finest policemen. There was this kid, there was this kid, we were all friends in high school, very smart kid, Gabriel Scott. He graduated from CWA. Gabriel Scott. We all graduated from high school in 1972. Gabriel, he came from the other side. They chased him, he went away, he got a degree in police science or something. He got a little something, he came back looking good. The kid was looking good. They brought in one Gerald Richard, the boy from B.W. Harris. And he said, too, he was a policeman. Yeah. What? We learned things, too. They had the police, we have a man in the police. So at least we, we, we knew what they were trying to do. The Progressive Alliance of Liberia, let me say, Mr. Chairman, we recruited 
day and night. We recruited. We recruited. And our, our research, our effort, revealed that Liberia were ready to flip the page. April 40, final day arrived. It was 6 o'clock, I think, between 6 and 6.30, I saw this boy approaching Greater Street, approaching Powell office. They call him Henry Boima Fambule. This boy I saw 1968 crying to see his father was being tortured on the center street. I say, this is my friend. And since 68, I had not seen him until that morning. I finally saw my friend. But the information I had was such that I couldn't let Boyma stay there again. The atrocity that was in the making was huge. And the true wing party would love to inflict pain on the state. I ran to him. I said, Pete, you ready for you ready, man? He said, come. I need the itinerary. He said, we got to go. I said, no, boy, man, you ain't going nowhere. He said, What's, what, what is that now? The demonstration cancel? I said, no. You find your way to the executive marshal ground 3 p.m. I will be there. The word was out that every power person will not mind, will show to the executive mansion and will be there. Three o'clock. We sent out the word that every power person, the cadre, needed to come to Garden Street because I was there. That was the command center. Six that opinion. They brought this army truck from Koji. On that truck was Kemo Wesai. Was Henry Zuo. Was Kemo Kuyomba. They came and they posted them in the cemetery and they took their seat. And they started bringing the army, man. Damn, begin, you got to have your nerve, man. What tough? I mean, I was sweaty. Sit down, these boys will kill the money. There's a guy we went to Gary School for four or five years. You know where they have Ministry of Labor? Across the street there, there used to be a government school. That is the school I went to. From second grade, they, they were stopping at sixth grade. When you graduate from sixth grade, then you go find some place else to do. And I met a kid. And they both were big in the CIA, CID. Samuel Gay came to me. He said, they will shoot you this morning. Be careful. May his soul rest in peace. Michael Bubba came and Michael said to me, so, but I made that, that money, I'm dead new summer now. He said, these people will do something this morning. What will you do? So I said, but you saw what sign? He said, let me look around because the army just came. The police started to talk to part of me too now, please. A nerve to nerve now. It was about 7.38. The people were getting crowded. 
very, very, very crowded. Yeah, but if fifty, if thirty, George Brown arrive. He said, "Come, this is not a good day for our country." I said, tell me, Bishop. He said, you need prayer. I know that, Bishop. So pray for me. He said, the sign of the cross. And I asked him, so Bishop, I'm okay now? somebody to pile off it to see if I was okay. I had a very good friend in Firestone, Dr. Trapp. Trapp was one of Liberia's finest medical doctor, you know, eye specialist. Well, our good friend. So he came. All of our friends concluded that I would be in the heat of that confusion that was taking place. There's a guy in the police, you are the deputy director of police, they call him Johnson. I don't remember the other name, but the true party people who live in the state know the name. Or better yet, you can check the police record 1979, who was deputy police director. Deputy police director for operation. He came, he brought a truck, load of police. He said, if this place is not vacated immediately, it will be rough. And one of our guys said, Bati, oh, Bati. Then I said to him, with a smile, I said, so were you ready to kill? Is that what would be rough? And when I approached him upon my oath, that whole place was quiet. I said, Johnson, we're not leaving here. We're not. Very street, the place we occupied. There's something about the place. Mr. Chairman, it was public, I mean, it was private property. office the area we covered a private property we had a right to be there we moved every power person that were in the general facility to come and squeeze up on power property we knew if we touch the street we will be violating the law And this Johnson guy came to talk tough to me. Said, and I asked him, I said, so the police then, the police thing you're doing, you don't learn book? You know law? I can't be in the police, you know law. You know law, then you say you be police man. He was pissed. All the guys started clapping and started yelling. They loaded we are put flame on them. They were trucking police, man. And Michael came back to me and said, Well, I bought final play. They said, Prime Matter, some other, bought final play. The meaning said, Don't be afraid. It will be, it will be tough this morning on this ground. No policeman will shoot here. We have wrestled the military from the government. Yes, sir. We have defeated the government on that count. You want to operate the armed forces of Liberia with a taint, with a bias? Do you know what you're doing? Consider 
the army question as you put together this TRC business, oh man, when you construct the agenda for Liberia for the next 30, 40 years, you better pay attention to the military piece. Let me raise with you another question. Who were those Liberians that were being recruited to the armed forces of Liberia? Who were they? They were Crown, they were Dio, they were Lomans. Nine or ten members of the armed forces of Liberia came from the three tribes. And you say, you organize me a national army. And you say, when you have high school education, you will not be a major to the army. And you say, this army will protect you. What kind of business is that? What kind of people are these? This is a tough business, Mr. Chairman. It's a tough business. The army came and Thomas was signed, brought the army out. You know the story. I don't need to go there. You know the story. The army took the day off. The police were left in the middle of the road. Bishop Brown said, Khan, so what will you do? I told him, Bishop, last night, Mr. Port came here and told us not to demonstrate. Then I laughed and I said, so Bishop, look now. Bishop, look, 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 look. You see, if, if you leave from here today, go back on Garden Street and you see the, the, the sewer, you know, that play the dirty water run? They are just building. And the word we got was that the police would put the power people in our, in our water and drown them. So what we did, we moved our guys away from the drainage to get space. Because the police, we are cranking ourselves up that the police will not come from behind or they would not have to come to the front. Being so stupid. Stupid boys. They came to arrest. And what we did that morning also, they did not see us go queer. They did not see Gabriel Bacchus Matthews. And we locked all the door to Powell office. And they immediately concluded that Matthew was in the building. And they ordered to open fire on the building. Order that the chairman, the secretary general, and all of them power people just shoot them. Yes. It was rough, eh? It was rough. But they were not there. So our, our guys in the security network told us. You got to find a way to get Matthew all of that play decon. You got to do something. The chairman in there. I said, yeah, it's okay. He be safe. We be safe. Be sure, do, be sure working on something. Our people working on something. Because we're afraid. We thought it could, you know, every police or every security person is a double agent. They bring you news and they carry news. And we master that. And be 
bishop call Oliver Bright call the president I just want to say this morning thank you George Brown thank you for everything there's a, there's a bishop there's a priest that came from from foyer an Episcopal priest Say, Bishop, they need prayer. They pray for them again. And so he led a prayer. And Bishop said, let me, call, let me call Oliver Bright again, the Minister of Justice. The Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of Liberia. The Attorney General of Liberia is supposed to be the people's lawyer. We lost that one. Couldn't get my Anthony General. So Bishop Brown said, Tom, by that time now, when you look in a graveyard, get a street side, the police, the army. Okay? Good job. By that time, the world was out. And, it, and our people start to approach Garden Street. At that time, we have put the cell operation in swing. The police were moving too fast on us, and we had to stop them. So the war went out. The position Broad Street, Ashmore Street, every major street, our people moved there. The cell was in, in motion. This policeman came back. The deputy director for operation came back. They step on piles ground. This consecrated ground. The people's place. And I asked him could you just leave this place so that we have peace? He pulled back. Gerald Richards came loaded. And they opened fire up our office. The first gunshot that went off April 14th, Mr. Chairman, was fired by the police. The police that came to order the arrest were pushed into the Sony. By that time, Bishop Brown had moved me out. The cadre had covered me out. I had to get out of there because we didn't want a command to broke. It would be broken if they take me away. They opened fire, Piggy. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> they open fire. They open fire. <sighs> There's a man that I want you to find, Mr. Chairman. Benson Bar. He's a medical doctor. our preparation for, for, the, for this day, we put in place some quasi-medic that maybe somebody who, who need to drain, who, you know. By 10 o'clock that morning, when Bishop took me and I came back on, on Kerry Street, there was some pharmacist that were there. And Benson Bar and I had agreed to meet there. 
I wanted Bensi to have some money to buy drugs or well, all kind of stuff. And so when Bishop took me and the police were moving, nobody knew me. So I told Bishop, if I stay with you, they will tell me. I can't stay with you. Our cadre moved me from Bishop. So we left the Episcopal. He, he took me to the Episcopal Church. But I, I concluded that the police could raid the church. The heartless police, they would raid the church. The government that had no conscience would raid the church. I met Benson Barb right here. Benson, medical doctor, MD. When you saw that movement, you said, Come, I'm moving the center to GFK. Something will happen here today. I said, For true and doctor? He said, Yes. So he moved. The little Babati operation we are put together, he moved it to GFK. It became our trauma unit. It became our trauma unit. It became our emergency center. Ben Simba. I hope he is living today. And I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the effort. Ben Simba what Ben Simba and a group went to JFK that morning of April 14, Mr. Chairman. They did not leave until one week later. Nobody will go to work. Whatever little doctor or nurse, group of nurses that were there, they were there. That was it. More so when they observed the violent reaction of government. Benson Barr stayed at John F. Kennedy April 14, 15, 16, 19. I think I, I, I got arrested uh, by April 20. Yeah. By that time, they, they, that Monday, you know, all the government officials there that ran from this town, chicken up, you know, they, they started to come by and start to make statements, acting that good government official there. You know, they, they, they decided now they can be government official. It's safe now. And so they came back to, to the city and they started to issue some strong, strong statement now. Every true we party person started, you know, they started dosing all their old, old 1956 resolution, them, their speeches, started dosing their paper, you know. And they came to town. And the word was, arrest them. Life or dead or alive. Twenty-five thousand dollars for this one, for that one. You know, Matthew, Queer, Marcus, Don, this, the Mason, Famula, Tibote, all these. You know, I mean, it was rough. It was a difficult time. Uh, the joke I thought was, do Mason was he signed or doing some family did they arrest his butt and they probably. <laughs> brought you to Monrovia and say, you know, you cannot be in Sino and you say you, you know, they brought everyone up, the true one into jail. And I think around the 19 or the 20 of Bensi Bar left. I know there are a lot of people in this town who will talk about how many people die or how many people got hurt. April 14. I know there are a lot of people in this town who will talk about loss of properties. I know one name, Mr. Chairman. Dancing Bob. Dancing Bob. 